Uh, ladies and gentlemen and non-binary folks, how do you do? I'm Peter Alexievich, and I welcome you to this discussion of what do we do with Russia? Now, look, as far as the war goes, only the Ukrainians can set the terms of Russian surrender, and only the Ukrainians can accept that surrender. And I'm good with that, right? I support that. And anybody interfering who's coming up with peace plans of their own should shut the fuck up. However, the West does have a role to play here. Because the West has imposed these sanctions. And I don't give a shit what MSNBC says. Uh, the sanctions are having a meaning. The, we see it. All you have to do is track the, the price of the ruble. Everybody's very fond of quoting this statistic that the ruble has lost 30% of its value since the beginning of the year. Okay, that's true. Uh, but what about the last 12 months? You take it out 12 months and the ruble is down nearly 60%, 57% against the euro. The, the ruble is the rubble. Now, it's worthless, and it's getting more worthless every day. Uh, as Russia continues to build up stockpiles of Indian rupees, because that's how the Indians are paying for uh, their oil, uh, it, things are just looking worse and worse. We can't stop. Look. Right. You know, you ever cut out, cut open a, a rotten piece of fruit? You know, it looks OK on the outside, but you cut it open and it's it's falling apart inside. That's Russia. And we can't put it back together. We can't stop it. What we can do is we can help them through the crisis that is coming as they as these feuding warlords tear themselves apart and states inside the Federation uh, leave because they will. Dagestan is going to be independent. Chechnya will overthrow Kadyrov. They'll be independent. Uh, Belarus will fall. Lukashenko will fall, rather, and Belarus will be free again. Uh, and the dominoes will keep falling, right? There are 83, uh, what do they call them, oblasts, uh, free autonomous ogrugs, uh, federal states, 83 bodies inside the Russian Federation that have their own uh, executive, parliamentary, and court system. The, the infrastructure is in place for them all to be independent if that's the way they want to go. And a lot of them will want to go that way. So what can we do here? Well, I think that there's a couple of things that the world needs to get out of the smoldering ashes of what was once the Russian Empire. We need them off the Security Council, period. End of conversation. They got to go. And if that means redoing the UN Charter or whatever it means, I don't know. Maybe we could have a two-year rotating seat from a representative from each of the former Soviet republics because the seat was originally a Soviet seat, uh, not a Russian seat, a Soviet seat. So maybe every one of the uh, former republics gets two years, and uh, then in 30 years when it comes around to Russia, if there is a Russia left, Maybe they can vote among their 83 autonomous republics for which one of them gets to send somebody in for their two years. And then it'll be another 30 years before they see that seat again. That's what we need. And then the other thing is they got to be denuclearized. They got to be denuclearized. And the U.S. should be prepared to give up lots of our nuclear stockpiles, too. We do not need them. Nobody needs them. The Chinese have a couple hundred bombs, right? Uh, Israel maybe has a dozen. China or uh, India, right? Uh, I'm not even sure. I think I think under 50. I think under 50 high yield nuclear weapons. So we do not need to have a stockpile of 5,300 ICBMs and tactical nukes. Not a thing that we need anymore. 
we can save ourselves a lot of money if we if we decommission that. But one thing is for sure. Russia must be denuclearized. We cannot live in a world where genocidal lunatics with nuclear weapons and a private mafia of two million people in their political party, because that's all that United Russia is, can hold the world hostage, can threaten us all the way that we've been threatened these last two years. No, no, enough. We got to face reality here, people. It's time to put an end to this. And we're not ending Russia. Russia's doing just fine by themselves, ending themselves. But for our help picking up the pieces, for an end to sanctions, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need your nukes, and we're going to need you to share that seat on the Security Council. And the very first country that should get it for two years is Ukraine. Then the Baltic states. And then from there, we'll see. Something like that. That's got to be a thing that's doable, guys. So uh, these are my thoughts on what's going to happen after the war and what we need to be thinking about for when this war ends. Why am I thinking about these things? Because I think we're going to see some things happen real soon here. Good, bad, not sure. But there's, there's a storm coming. And it's about to break. <laughs>